Imagine trying to use Facebook, but having the necessity to install a new application or setting up a new password each time you want to reach a new friend. That's exactly how using blockchain feels nowadays. We have so many blockchains and all of them work on isolated spaces. Trying to send tokens and assets between chain is a complete nightmare. You always need to depend on a third party bridge, which is sometimes slow, most of times insecure, and you need to trust them to make the process happen. That's exactly what the Ag layer solution comes to solve. You as the user interact with just one simple layer, and Ag layer solves everything, allowing you to transact sending cross-chain tokens regardless the chain you want to use. Let me explain how Ag layer works. So basically, on a traditional fragmented blockchain ecosystem, you as the user want to send tokens to a different blockchain, so you always need to interact with different bridges, which, which might have high fees, security risks, and long waits. Each bridge is connected to a different chain, and you always need to use, you know, third parties. Egg layer solution allows you to interact with just one single layer, the Egg layer, which is directly connected to Ethereum or slash the EBM, and this automatically interacts with different chains. This is fast, secure, and less of a headache for anyone trying to do so. So what Egg layer enables is a unified bridge, which serves as a single entry point for all chains. We have proof of aggregation through bundle security proofs and fast interoperability because you have fast cross-chain messaging. At the end of the line, what Egg layer enables is for you as the user to be able to interact with just one single unified bridge and forget about the rest. As you can see here on this diagram, we have a traditional workflow using a fragmented blockchain. You need to go through a lot of steps from approving the tokens, minting, locking, bridging, etc. And using the egg layer solution, you just interact with one simple router, which is going to interact with the bridge, and the destination tokens are going to appear on your account. And on today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create and deploy your own ERC20 based token, which is going to serve as the foundation. And then we are going to install the latest egg layer module we created in collaboration with Polygon. So you are going to be able to create a new token from scratch and send it to another blockchain. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so let's see how you can use Aglayer to bridge tokens between chains. For that, we are going to be doing this step by step from scratch. From your Tearweb dashboard, let's click on Deploy Contract and we are going to be selecting this modular token. This is going to be the ERC20 base token. And this is going to serve as the foundation. This token is the main core ERC20 token on which we can start adding modules to it. So let's click on Deploy Now. Let's add some information. So I'm going to say my nice Act Layer token. This symbol, for example, I'm going to select an image. Yes, I think I'm funny. And you can set up any description like my nice token, for example. The owner address is going to be by default the wallet connected. The recipient address, the same. This is going to add automatically the contract to your projects if you leave this checked and we need to select the chain. For now, we are going to be using Cephalia. Let's click on Deploy Now. This is going to trigger my transaction on the wallet I'm using, in this case, MetaMask. Let's confirm the transaction. And once the transaction is done, we can open this on our dashboard. And as it is now, this is just a base ERC20 core contract with no further functionality. Let's add the Ag layer module. So let's go to the module section. And here we need to install the Ag layer module. We need to use the following address is going to be on the description below, but I think by default is going to be using the exact same one. Let's select the module. As you can see, we have a lot of different modules, but the one important for us is the Ag layer cross chain. Let's keep the version as latest. This is going to check the compatibility. And here we need to select the router address. The router address is going to be really important because this is going to be the responsible from sending the tokens from this chain to the destination chain. So let's paste the router address. This same router address is going to be also on the description and on the guide I'm going to leave. Remember that this router address is going to depend on the network you are using. For this demo, we are going to be using Cephalia, but we are going to have different addresses depending on the chain we are deploying the base ERC20 token. Let's click on install. This should trigger another transaction on my MetaMask. Let's confirm this. And as easy as that, the module was installed successfully. So as you can see here on the module section, we have this Ag layer cross chain already installed. 
Now let's see how we can actually bridge tokens using this layer. Right now, no one can start minting tokens on this specific ERC20 contract. So for that, let's go to the Explorer and give us the minting role. So under the right section, let's click on Grand Roles. The address is going to be your wallet address. The role is going to be one, which addresses for Minter. And the native token value, we are going to leave it as zero. Let's click on Execute. This is going to trigger another transaction. This is going to give us the ability to start minting some tokens. And once the transaction is completed, our wallet should have the ability to start minting tokens. So we can go back to the Modules tab and we can use this mintable ERC20 token module, which gets installed automatically when we deploy this. Here it says mint NFT, don't mind this. The reason is because we deployed these as generic modules. So this should also be useful for other type of contract. But right now we are going to mint a ERC20 token. The recipient address is going to be again, or same wallet address and the amount, let's say I want to mint, I don't know, this amount of tokens because I can. Let's hit on mint and let's confirm the transaction. Okay, it seems that the transaction was successful. But right now my MetaMask does not show that tokens for me. So what I'm going to do is go to activity, open the blog explorer. Let me make this bigger for you. And I'm using this token. So I'm going to copy this contract and add it to my wallet. So I'm going to import tokens and paste the token address. And as you can see here, I have this crazy amount of tokens minted on my account. So let's go back to the peer web dashboard. And the next step for us is to approve the transfers on the contract. So for that, I'm going to execute the approve function. The spender should be the contract address. So I'm going to use the contract address we have here. Let's approve for the contract to be able to spend, I don't know, 10,000 tokens. Let's click on execute. And this will approve the contract to be a spender. So let's click on confirm. And once the transaction goes by, we are going to have this information telling us that now the contract is approved for transferals. Now we need to allow users to be executed transfer functions. So for that, let's go to the modules tab. And here on the transferable ERC20 module, as you can see, nobody has permission to transfer tokens on this contract. So for that, let me remove this restrict transfers and hit again on the update. This of course is going to trigger another transaction. Let's confirm this and wait a little bit. And it seems that the transaction finished successfully. So that's all the configuration we need. Now let's test this out. Let's try to bridge tokens within this chain to another chain. So for that, I'm going to go to the Explorer again and let's execute the function bridge tokens. Select this, we need to set the destination network. I'm going to be using this chain ID, which represents the Polygon CK EVM Cardona testnet. So I'm going to paste that over here. The call address is or wallet address. So I'm going to copy my wallet address and paste it over here. And the amount I want to send, I don't know, is going to be 100 tokens. Let's click on execute. This should trigger a transaction on my MetaMask. Let's click on confirm and let's wait. And it seems that the transaction was successful. Let's check if that's actually true. Let me open my MetaMask and I'm going to open this on the Blog Explorer. It seems that it's still indexing, so let's wait a little bit. So once the process is finished, we can check that the transaction was successfully and we was able to successfully mint those tokens on the destination chain. If we check the logs, we are going to find this section over here on which we see how the process went by. We have the origin address, which is our contract address. We have the destination network and of course the wallet address we are going to receive those tokens and the amount. This message or this metadata over here is actually just the information about the token name, which we said as my nice token. Another important thing to take in consideration here is this address we have here after the transfer function is executed. This address actually is the bridge address on the destination contract. So if we check the blog explorer for the Polygon CK EVM, you are going to see that exact same address is the one which is going to be responsible for sending those tokens to your wallet once the bridging process is completed. Of course, the bridging on cross-chain layers is going to take some time. So this transaction or the transaction of the tokens being minted on your account for the destination chain is going to appear here. So you just need to take in consideration that and be aware to 
take a look to the destination bridge contract, you are going to find also on the logs on the blockchain explorer. And that was it. This is the way you can deploy your own ERC20 based contract, add the ag layer functionality to it, and start bridging tokens cross chain using that. If you enjoyed this video so far, please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. That was it on my end, and I'll see you on the next video. See ya!